Hi, um, every so often I have the need to wind a custom coil and um, for one off this is the setup I tend to use. It's basically just a power drill um, with whatever bobbin I need for the coil that I need to wind on it. Um, and to count the turns um, I've got a little Hall, hall Effect sensor um, and a magnet stuck to the drill chuck here. Um, the Hall Effect sensor is easier than optical sensors just because they, they're a lot less critical for alignment so this is just stuck on a piece of wire cable tied to the drill because it's a one-off setup. And I'll just use my um, frequency counter to uh, act as a, uh, as a um, turns counter. So each, each revolution it just ticks up one. And um, this sort of generally works reasonably well. Um, basically you, you always need to keep it back tension so I literally just hold the wire and you just, you just use my thumb to sort of keep a bit of tension on it. You've got a nice sort of speed control on the drill, you can sort of speed it up, slow it down. And you can get some sort of fairly fast um, fairly fast winding rates using this. Um, this is fine for one offs but um, I've got to do about 40 coils job fairly soon and this, this is a, one reason this is a bit of a pain is obviously you've got to keep your eyes on this make sure it's winding properly but also keep an eye on the number of turns and you know because I know the number of turns that are going to be on this thing uh, it would be nice to have some sort of automated um, system. Uh, incidentally this bobbin is actually designed for winding um, coils like this which is sort of standalone RFID coils and um, basically the way this works is some large holes in the side so what you do is you wind the coil around it and then you use pass some thin wires through these holes to just tie it in four places and then you just take the, uh, the side off and you end up with a sort of coil that's tied up enough, enough to then wrap you know, wrap and turn it into a nice um, sort of fairly compact coil, coil assembly. Now for feeding wire, um, if it's fairly thick wire like this stuff that's sort of fairly strong um, this is I don't know, 30, 30 gauge or so. What it tends to do is just stick it on a, a some sort of shelf or something so it sort of spools off like this. Now for thinner wires though that doesn't really work because the tension to, to unroll the wire is just going to break it's going to break it. So this is the sort of stuff I'm going to be using which is 40 gauge. It's about the thickness of a hair. So sort of pulling off a reel like that just isn't going to do but there's a really simple solution. Uh, all you do is you basically just stick it on the floor that way up and then you just pull the wire, I'll, actually, I'll illustrate it with a thicker wire because you won't see the thin stuff on camera but basically the wire just pulls off, this, this isn't a good reel because this has got a hardboard um, lid but where you've got a nice sort of smooth, smooth plastic um, edge it works fine, you just sort of lift it up and the wire just uncoils itself and if you put it on the floor it gives it enough length for it to sort of un uncurl and um, just sort of generally sorts itself out by the time it get it gets to your hand, and that, that actually works really well. And of course, the um, yeah unrolling doesn't really work when you've got sort of bigger bigger reels to uh, deal with like this. So I was thinking, basically, what I need is something a little bit more automated than this, where I can just tell it a number of turns, it would accelerate up, and then accelerate back down again, ending up with the precise number of turns. So I was thinking, well, you know, the obvious thing to do is instead of having a motor with feedback and so on, is, is use a stepper motor. So I was thinking, oh, I'll, I'll you know I'll just knock something up with a little sort of processor and a, so I can type in the number of turns and sort of um, have a few buttons on it to, to do it. And I thought well hang on a minute that's quite a lot of work. Now I recently um, bought this Chinese CNC engraver um, for doing things like PC cutting PCB outlines, uh, front panels and uh, small machining stuff which um, actually seems to work quite nicely. It comes with this sort of box full of uh, stepper drivers and I'm currently running it on um, Mac 3 which despite being sort of fairly primitive in using the parallel port actually seems to work reasonably well. So I thought ah oh, you know that this is something whose job is sort of accelerating, decelerating stepper motors and you know, moving precise distances so um, what I've done uh, I just took a uh, Got another stepper motor out of my teardown box and um, hooked that up to it. Now, obviously, because I want this to wind as quickly as possible and also because it's driving no load, I've basically set the um, velocity to maximum but also the acceleration to the slowest setting. Well, something I found is it would sometimes work at quite high speed but sometimes not. So, it's, it's, it's starting to missteps there, but I have had it actually had it working much, much faster than that. Now, on the speed it would it would go at would be just about acceptable. But for you know, I'm winding 100 turns, so it would take like about 30 seconds on that. So I might just live with that. Now, if we actually look at the step pulses that are coming out Mac 3, you can see why this is happening. See, so the actual step pulses seem to be on a sort of fairly fi fixed time base. So it's sort of sampling 
and as we're approaching the sample rate we're getting jitter so it's when that jitter happens we get steps that are too quick and that call, that's causing the motor to misstep um, this is only the trial version of Mac 3 and that's locked to a 25 kilo sample rate so um, there's not a lot we can do about it but it's interesting that it was actually working sort of some, you know, some of the time and not others so I think um, we need to either live with a slower step rate or find another solution this is the core that um, I'm winding, basically it's around the outside of the PCB, it'll have the circuitry in the middle, then there's this bobbin, this is actually acrylic, but this will just be made out of 3.2mm PCB material glued on the outside, and then the sort of coil will be wound around the outside, and then just there's a little, little slit cut there, and the two ends will just solder down straight onto the PCB, and the winding jig's just a, a plate with the screws, so this, this just uh, locates onto the... Uh, screws and I just hold it in place with a couple of uh, a couple of pillars while it's being wound. Uh, the actual G-code program could hardly be simpler. There's a G91 to put it into relatively relative mode and then a move that simply says move this axis 100. This works out as um, one turn corresponds to four millimeters so that X100 will do 25 turns. Right, so let's give this a go. Well, nice you've got the, um, yeah, the jog controls to actually get, get it in the position you want. So we'll just put the wire in the slot. And then just secure the end. And that's it going. There we go, one coil. Right, so I was doing a little bit more playing with motor speeds and I suddenly realised that it, even at the speeds that I normally run the CNC engraver at, it was still um, missing steps. I thought, hmm, maybe it needs a bit of uh, damping. So what I've done, I've just put a big uh, steel washer on here to give, a bit more, give it a bit more weight and that's made a huge difference. So that's going yeah, right up to the full speed and you know, even with a faster acceleration than um, the really slow acceleration I was doing before, although and the slow acceleration might be handy just to um, make it easier just to make sure that the wire, the wire starts off in the right place. Um, this isn't particularly well balanced but um, it seems to sort of be a lot happier than it was before. Right, so let's try again. So this is the full 100 turns. I think I can live with that amount of time to wind each coil.